a fragile truce of a violent taxi strike is barely holding it down in Cape Town. Sintaco accuses the city of reneging on the deal by impounding 14 vehicles this past weekend. But the city insists it's merely doing its work and those vehicles should not be allowed on public roads. In fact, the city says all but one of the vehicles were seized under the National Land Transport Act. Let's get clarity from Safety and Security MMC, J.P. Smith. J.P., welcome to All Angles. A very good afternoon. What is the latest right now, given the, uh, call it a war of words, and the tussle between uh, the city and Santaco? Right. Um, afternoon. At, at the moment, there is uh, no real tension. The situation is understood by all of us. Uh, I think Santaco finds itself in a difficult position in having to uh, keep all of its members and owners, taxi owners, on board uh, with the agreement they reached last week. Uh, and perhaps they have not accurately uh, communicated uh, what that agreement said with all of the owners and are having to perhaps uh, create the impression that the city is engaging in wrongdoing. But the agreement is very clear. There are four... Uh, that for two weeks, we will limit impoundment to only four issues. Uh, and during those two weeks, we will uh, uh, compose a standard operating procedure for city and provincial traffic staff that will guide the officers in the exercise of the discretion they wield in terms of the National Land Transportation Act. So in terms of the National Act, every traffic offence committed by a taxi is impoundable. All 14 vehicles we impounded over the weekend is in terms of the National Land Transportation Act, all 14 of them. Uh, and we could, in fact, be impounding about 50 times more vehicles than we are impounding, but we limit the impoundment to only the most egregious moving violations that uh, pose a risk to other road users. So uh, that was what the agreement said. We will impound for uh, unroadworthy vehicles, for um, drivers without PDPs or driver's licenses, for not having an operating license or for being off route. Uh, over the weekend, one of the officers impounded a vehicle that lay outside of that temporary agreement that applies for two weeks for overloading. There were more than four people more in the taxi than is entitled. So with respect, it is actually quite a serious issue. It's not hardly a, a, a petty matter. Uh, it impacts on the, um, the, the safety of that vehicle significantly. Uh, but as it is, we gave the vehicle back. It had not been processed yet, and we were able to rapidly return the vehicle. And of the 14 vehicles, uh, JP, that have been impounded, um, are you looking at releasing them? If so, when and how? Um, no, sir. There is no intention to release it because we acted in precise agreement with the agreement with Santaco. So this is exactly what we agreed with Santaco last week. It is in writing. It is very clear. It is unambiguous. We will impound for those four offences. Remember, there's a list of, of hundreds of offences for which potentially tra um, public transport vehicles or minibus taxis can be impounded in terms of the National Land Transport Act. We only impound for a comparatively small list. Four of those lists is non-negotiable. And the taxi associations themselves don't dispute the need to impound for that in the meetings with us. They may portray a different image uh, publicly, but in meetings with us, that's what they agreed to. And so that's what we continue to impound for over the weekend. There was one mistake made, and that taxi was immediately returned. It had not yet been processed at the pound, uh, permitting it to be returned. Uh, and we started uh, five hours of work yesterday between us and the provincial government to determine which offences we are comfortable to fine for and which offences we believe we must continue to impound for so that when we meet with Santaka, because they were meant to meet with us yesterday and ask for that meeting to be postponed by a week, which I think is unfortunate, but we respect that decision. Uh, so that next week when we meet with them, we have a very clear idea of what constitutes offences which uh, pose a threat to the commuters in those vehicles. Our first priority and loyalty is to them and their safety and reducing the carnage on our roads, the 12,500 people who die needlessly on our roads every year, and secondly, to the other motorists on the, um, on the roads, to their safety. So that's where our focus will lay, and we have identified offences which we already don't impound for, as we previously discussed with Santaco, and which we're happy to commit to writing to say those are non-impoundable offences where we will continue to issue fines as we already do. We issue about 50 fines for every one impoundment we do. 
And of course, I like that you mentioned the commuter who is uh, of paramount importance uh, and is in the middle, uh, caught between the tussle that happens between the city when vehicles are being impounded, which has resulted in a strike right now. What do you say to them in the event that another strike um, could emanate from this? I don't think another strike will emanate from it. If it was going to, it would already have. Uh, the truth is that Santaka understands only too well that that the driving situation at the moment is unsafe. In meetings with us, they acknowledge that some of the driver's uh, conduct leaves much to be desired and that they say they themselves wish they had better tools to determine the suitability of drivers. So, of course, the answer to that is, well, you're a business. You're a 90 billion brand business in, in South Africa. It is your job to make sure that the drivers who operate your mobile businesses on four wheels, that those are fit and proper people who are adequately trained to manage the safety of the commuters in those vehicles. Those people's lives matter a great deal to the city and to the province, and their lives and their safety is non-negotiable. When, if Santaco chooses to have a strike, uh, then we will do what we do in all these cases. We support the other transport options, to be able to take up the slack that the that is lost through the absence of the minibus taxis. And in fact, that would work quite well, but for the criminal violence that follows the strike. It's not the strike that's the crisis. The crisis is the violence, the arson, murder, attempted murder, um, extortion, intimidation, uh, criminal law amendment act uh, uh, violations, all these other matters that go with the, the strike. And those things are not, they're non-negotiable. They're illegal and criminal. In, in, in law, they should not be happening. And unfortunately, the, the industry uses it as a, uh, as a tool to force a settlement in their favor in things where really safety of people is non-negotiable and nobody, nowhere in the state should we be negotiating with people who engage in criminal behavior. And before I let you go, JP, what's the latest now? You did allude to the fact that the tension uh, is non-existent at this point. Uh, what, what's the situation like right now as you and I speak? Uh, there is at the moment no strike activity. Buses are running. Taxis are running. Uh, so we're not having any issues. We haven't had since last week. Uh, the only uh, issue at play is the, the public... Uh, moving off the goalpost in terms of trying to redebate the in the public domain the agreement that was reached last week in writing it is it's quite unambiguous uh, and the talks that we were meant to start yesterday now delayed till next week uh, in terms of drawing up a standard operating procedure to guide the staff because the the law says they may impound so we as i said impound about one out of the 50 offenses we find and the goal here would be to guide the officer's execution of that discretion um, so that the, the, both the enforcers, the traffic officers, and the public transport vehicles understand where they stand. JP, thank you so much for your time and joining us here on All Angles on ENCA.